14E on symmetry properties of circular functions uh, on page 491 of your textbook. The first thing we're going to do is look at a do now question from exercise 14D. Uh, this is just once again reviewing trigonometric ratios which you guys have done in previous years, namely year 9 and 10. So just very quickly, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the label, uh, sorry, label the sides. So A, O and H. H being the hypotenuse which is the longer side. I know that A is going to be the line or the side that is attached or adjacent to my angle, which is going to be this side, and of course the opposite on the opposite side of the angle. I know that I'm going to be using A and O, because A and O actually gives me, uh, well, tan. So I'm using TOA. So I end up with tan of my angle, which is 30 degrees, which gives me O over A, which is 6 over X. Now you could put this in the calculator already by just solving, but I'm going to multiply both sides by x, so I end up with x tan of 30 degrees equals to 6, and then I'm going to divide both sides by tan 30, which gives me x equals to 6 over tan 30 degrees. Can someone put in that calculator for me and tell me what they get as an exact value? Uh, negative 0.9. As an exact value? A, six root three, six root three. Yeah, sweet. Thank you very much. Awesome. So the process is the same. Just put in the calculator and we get what we get. Awesome. So looking at today's content, now I do want to get, uh, give a heads up. This is probably the uh, potentially one of the largest hurdles for trigonometric functions. Uh, when it comes to the unit circle, there's a lot of properties about it that make it really, really useful. So for example, we talked about how the radius of a unit circle is one unit which is why it's called a unit circle. We also talk about a radian being the angle that, uh, that the unit circle needs to make in order for the distance on the outside to equal to the radius, or in other words, one. The other thing that we're going to be looking at a lot is the symmetrical property. What we do is we look at this circle over here and we split it up into quadrants. Have you guys looked at quadrants before? Yeah. So we have the four quadrants, and if I get direct attention over here, we have four quadrants. We have A, S, T, C. A lot of teachers teach it as cast, but technically it should be one, two, three, four. I teach it in a lot more memorable way. I say it's astic, which is very gross, but it's very, you know, it rolls off the tongue. Uh, astic, but it's easy to remember. But in, on that note, we have A, S, T, C. Basically, all that means is that in each of these quadrants, Besides the first quadrant here, only one function, so sine, cosine, or tan, is going to be positive. What I mean by that is, well, let's focus on points themselves. If I was to pick a point in this quadrant, well, we know that the sine is the y value, don't we? So the y value of this point is always going to be positive. If I pick a point here, in quadrant one, it's going to be positive. Makes sense. If I do it the other way and say, okay, let's look at the cosine value. We know that cosine is x, don't we? So if I pick a point here, in the second quadrant, cosine of that point right there, that angle, isn't going to give me a positive value, is it? Because it's a negative x value. So in this quadrant, a stands for all, so all the functions are positive. In this quadrant, it stands for sine, so only sine is positive. Obviously, t stands for tan, and c stands for cosine. So only sine, tan, cosine are positive in their respective quadrants, and A means all of them are positive in the first quadrant. Now, with that in mind, I do need to introduce this really gross-looking thing over on the left-hand side. So we've already split it up to four quadrants. What we can do is we can use the unit circle and take advantage of the symmetrical properties in order to find the angles that are in other quadrants. Most of the time, and particularly in year 9 and 10, you'll be presented with angles that are less than pi on 2, or less than 90 degrees, right? You have, like, for example, a triangle that's 50 degrees, or whatever it is. Um, and most of the time, you will be presented with that, but what happens if we need to find it beyond that first quadrant? So this unit circle proposes, well, if I have this angle right here, and we'll call that theta, we don't know what that angle is, or you could probably estimate, but we don't know what that angle is, and we treat it as if we don't know what that angle is. If we don't know what the angle is, we'll call it theta, and we'll say, okay, we've got the angle. How do we find the same point on the other side? So let's imagine, let's purely look at the sine value. So sine theta is the y-coordinate of this point. Are we happy with that? 
yeah, the y coordinate of that point because it's sine. How do I find the same y coordinate in the second quadrant? Well, what we have to do is instead of going and just saying, okay, well, I'll just you know add pi or whatever, we have to go from this point, which is our starting point, and we have to go all the way around and then go back theta. So the angle we make here is going to be the same angle as here. Are we following along with that? Any questions? So what we do is we always treat it as if we start at this horizontal line. So if it's the second quadrant, we go all the way to pi and we take away theta. Remember, takeaway is going the other way. We're going clockwise if it's takeaway. And which is why it says p of pi minus theta. And you can probably imagine if we're going to the third quadrant, which is this quadrant here, to make the same angle, we have to go all the way to pi and then add our angle of theta. So we can't go all the way to here and then go backwards because that wouldn't make sense. You would have to use another angle. So we all the, always go to the horizontal line and then add however much we need. And of course, if we're going to quadrant four, we go all the way to two pi because we're going back to the horizontal line and we take away that theta angle. So two pi minus theta, which is what we have over here. So the rule, the golden rule is we always start from the horizontal line and then work our way with that angle. Okay. That's in principle what the unit circle is in terms of symmetrical properties. Let's try to put this into practice. I'm not going to go through all of these, but the example is pretty much the same. In this example, it says if sine equal sine x, sorry, equals a 0 0.6 and cosine x equals 0 0.8, find the value of sine pi minus x. Now, of course, we're using x instead of theta, but it's saying that the sine x equals a 0 0.6, which means that whatever our angle is, the y value is 0 0.6. That's all we need to know for this. Because it says, well, sine pi minus x, remember x is implied it's going to be less than our 90 degrees. So it's in our first quadrant. If I'm saying pi minus x, I'm going pi minus x. So it makes sense that it's in my second quadrant, doesn't it? Yeah? It's in my second quadrant. Now, all we do is refer back to this. In the second quadrant, is sine positive? Yeah, it is. So I just write equals 0 0.6. You can imagine it as just being reflected across this line here. And if that point there was 0 0.6, then we're just picking that point there on the other side. Now, if I go, for example, 2 pi minus x, we can imagine... That 2 pi minus x, we're going all the way around on the circle, 2 pi, which is 360 degrees, and we're going take away our angle. We're taking away our angle, which goes backwards this way. We end up with quadrant 4, and if we're in quadrant 4, is sine positive? No, it's negative, so we just write equals negative 0 0.6. Yeah. Let's do cosine of negative x. So negative means we go, and, uh, we go clockwise, sorry which means we'd go this way, wouldn't we? That's negative x. And if we're in this quadrant here, then we know that cosine, is that positive or negative in this quadrant? Negative, right? Because we're just looking at, sorry, it's positive, my apologies, because it says cosine here, which means it's positive. So, equals, and I use that cosine value, so 0 0.8. The principle stays the same regardless. And you do the same thing, and if it says tan, for example, remember the tan rule that we have from before, where tan equals sine over cosine. And that's it for today's exercise. Remember the golden rule is that we always start from the horizontal line, never go to the vertical, and then work your way from there. It gets even more confusing. Okay? Awesome. That's the exercise 14E.